be it in films, TV series, or even random TikTok videos, most of us have come across some idea of what dinosaur sounds might have been like. However, what did these creatures actually sound like? I think it's fair to say that most portrayals in media don't quite capture the sounds dinosaurs likely produced with much accuracy, though, to be fair, you can't really blame them entirely, as the information available back then was pretty limited. Even today, it remains a subject of debate and one that still needs more investigation. That said, it's been clear for some time now that the way dinosaurs are portrayed in the Jurassic Park series is, frankly, quite inaccurate. It's well established that theropods didn't roam about roaring loudly like they're often depicted. Rather, it's much more plausible that the noises dinosaurs made were closer to those of birds and reptiles, as these groups belong to the same archosaur lineage. Of course, the specific sounds would vary depending on the dinosaur species. Larger dinosaurs, like megatheropods and sauropods, likely produced sounds resembling a combination of crocodilian growls, elephant rumbles, and perhaps other forms of wildlife. These were primarily low-frequency sounds. Experts like Tom Williamson, a paleontology curator at the Museum of Mexico, have suggested that these low-pitched sounds could help cut through dense forest undergrowth. Before we continue, let me quickly clear something up. Across many platforms, you'll often see various depictions of dinosaurs and the sounds they made. Unless these come from credible sources, it's best not to take them at face value. Most of these simply take a bird, like a loon, and slow down its calls to create that distorted, prehistoric vibe. While they might sound interesting, the problem is that they're often not backed by reputed institutions for accuracy or properly researched by paleontologists. Keep in mind that even scientifically backed research on dinosaur sounds isn't completely accurate, so it's best to take all of this with a bit of skepticism. That said, I won't be too harsh on them. To be fair, they are at least working with the closest living relatives we have today. Thus, you could say they come somewhat close to recreating the actual sounds these ancient animals might have made. Anyway, let's move on to our three main examples for today's video. We'll be discussing the tyrant lizard, King Tyrannosaurus rex, the near-crested lizard Pinacosaurus, and lastly, the plank lizard Pinacosaurus. Let's dive right in. The dinosaur everyone seems most curious about when it comes to sounds is undoubtedly the Tyrannosaurus rex. In Jurassic Park, they created its roar by combining several animal sounds, like a baby elephant squealing, an alligator gurgling, and a tiger growling. They even used the sound of a whale's blowhole to mimic the Tyrannosaur's breathing. Naturally, this mix made the Tyrannosaur an iconic sound in cinema. If you've ever heard a dinosaur roaring, chances are it was based on the Rex's sound design. Yet, when we consider newer and more evidence-based recreations of Tyrannosaur sounds, they seem to lean heavily toward lower frequencies. When you really think about it, this isn't all that surprising. After all, Jurassic Park included a big cat's growl in the T-Rex's roar. Tyrannosaurs, however, share very little in common with tigers. It makes more sense to compare the rex to its nearest living relatives, along with other large animals, to better grasp the types of sounds it might have produced. Of course, that's just scratching the surface. There's a lot more research involved. This suggests that the Tyrannosaurus rex most likely made low-pitched, closed-mouthed rumbles rather than dramatic, wide-mouth roars. Documentaries like the BBC's The Real T-Rex with naturalist Chris Packham, along with research by paleontologist Julia Clark, suggest the Tyrannosaur likely emitted low-frequency sounds. Some recreations draw from various animals, including emus, ostriches, and American alligators, to name a few. If you've ever been curious about how the Tyrannosaurus rex might have sounded, here's an example from The Real T-Rex documentary by Chris Packham. They combined the sounds of a Eurasian bittern with a Chinese crocodile for this recreation. Of course, they scaled it up to fit an 8-ton Tyrannosaur. Now, imagine feeling this sound resonate through the air before even hearing it. Pretty terrifying, right? I'd say this is way scarier than the classic Jurassic Park T-Rex roar. It carries a deeply unsettling power. Your body senses the threat before your ears can even process it. Next up, one dinosaur whose sounds we have a decent understanding of is the Parasaurolophus, 
The reason for this is that, in 1995, paleontologists uncovered a well-preserved Parasaurolophus skull. Several years later, a CT scan was used to build a 3D model, enabling researchers to simulate the sounds this dinosaur could produce as air flowed through its distinctive crest. The resulting emulation produced sounds like this. I'd argue that there's something inherently fascinating about these kinds of recreations. Picture yourself in the Mesozoic era, relaxing by a river, spotting a Parasaurolophus across the water, and hearing it produce these sounds. However, before getting too immersed in this simulation, it's important to note that it doesn't account for possible soft tissue structures in the crest and nasal passages, which could have impacted airflow in the resulting sounds. While it's a reasonably accurate estimation, it's far from a definitive representation. Moving forward, there's also been a recent and incredibly rare discovery of a larynx belonging to a Panacosaurus. Even though it was a two-ton ankylosaurid, researchers suggest it may have produced chirping sounds. Paleontologist Yoshida noted that the larynx found was both large and mobile, much like those of birds, which are capable of producing a wide range of sounds. To investigate this dinosaur's possible vocalizations, scientists analyzed the fossilized larynx and compared it to modern birds and reptiles. They found it had a large cricoid and elongated bones for altering the size of its voice box, indicating it could create a range of sounds, rumbles, grunts, roars, and possibly even chirps, capable of carrying over long distances. However, it's unlikely that an ankylosaur made chirps or rumbles similar to modern birds, given its massive size and unique vocal anatomy. It's also worth noting that birds rely on their syrinx for vocalizations instead of their larynx. On top of that, being a two-ton animal, its larynx would have been significantly larger in scale. This is why researchers have stated that future studies will aim to refine the possible sounds this dinosaur could have made. They also plan to search for additional specimens that might include preserved larynxes or perhaps even a syrinx. So who's to say? If it resembled birds more closely, it might have sounded something like this. However, as British paleontologist Mark Witten pointed out, there are various interpretations regarding how dinosaurs created sounds. Even though they weren't closely related, this team suggested its vocalizations were more similar to those of birds. Whether it produced sounds via its larynx, like most animals, or through a syrinx-like birds, the lack of evidence about when the syrinx evolved complicates things significantly. Regardless, this discovery has brought the topic of complex dinosaur vocalizations back into the spotlight, which is undoubtedly a positive development. It's wild to imagine a two-tone creature producing chirping sounds, but I'd argue that it's far more intriguing than what we initially believed. What's your take on this? Do you favor the way dinosaurs are portrayed in Jurassic Park? Or do you lean toward the latest research which suggests dinosaurs produced a range of sounds, from low frequencies to chirping and whatever you'd call the Parasaurolophus' sounds? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. Before we finish, it's essential to acknowledge that the study of dinosaur sounds is a constantly evolving area of research. What's considered accurate and reliable one year could easily change the next. With any luck, we'll soon piece together the puzzle of how these extinct animals truly sounded. With that said, we've come to the end of the video and I hope you found it enjoyable. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and until next time on Prehistoric Valley.